All right, hello everyone. Looks like we've got a crowd coming. Wait another minute, see if there's any late stragglers coming in. All right, my clock says 3.01, so let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Dan Cunningham. Um, I'm with Fiskars. Uh, you know us as orange-handled scissors. Um, we make a lot of different scissors. So what I'm hoping today is to teach you about all of the range of scissors that we make, um, as well as some of the features of those scissors, um, when you might wanna use one pair of scissors over another. And we kind of generally call this the scissors tool school. Um, I'm joined uh, by a couple other employees, but specifically Amanda Applequist. She is um, my coworker who is a senior product manager. Um, she'll speak kind of at the end and talk about shopping at shelf a little bit. There's Amanda. Yep. <laughs> um, so she'll talk about shopping at shelf and maybe a little bit of help again when choosing and standing there at the, the Michael's display of all the scissors. Um, and that'll be at the end. Um, but then after that, we should have time for some Q&A, um, answering some questions. Uh, but along the way, you can also type your questions in and uh, we've got somebody who's reading those and if they're pertinent to the discussion um, that we might pause and answer some of those questions as we go along. So let me share. Um, all right. I am should be screen sharing. Um, somebody give me a thumbs up that you can see Fiskars, Scissors Tool School. Excellent, great. Um, so again, my name is Dan Cunningham and a little bit of background on me. Um, I've been with Fiskars for about 11 years um, and I am an engineer with the company. I, I have been uh, since I started. So I've actually had my hand in developing quite a few of the scissors that are actually out there on the shelf right now. Um, in more recently, in the last five or six years, I've actually joined the R&D team, which is kind of a sideways step into, it's still engineering, it's still some product development, but I also work very closely with consumers to understand what they do, what they're using our tools for, maybe what new tools um, they could benefit from. And so as part of that, I like to give these types of presentations and help people understand what we are, what we do, what our tools do. Um, so I feel like I'm pretty well suited to kind of explain the technicalities of scissors. So to get us started right along the lines of scissors, um, I really want to add one slide to touch on scissor basics because even though scissors are essentially an iron age tool, they are thousands of years old, there's not much to them at first glance. You see they have blades, um, they're often metal, they don't have to be, but most of the time they're metal. Those two blades are joined together by a joint. Usually that's screwed together, but not always. And then normally you're holding this pair of scissors by the handles. Those are the things that you're touching. They have to be a little more ergonomic. Um, but even though it's these three simple features that make a scissors, there are a lot of aspects to those three simple features that the engineers can play with, that we can adjust or modify or help understand and by doing these modifications to say the material of the blades or the handles ambidexterity or the texture or even like the joints tightness, by varying those things, you can tune a product to function in a more specific way. So for instance, you might have a pair of scissors that cuts heavy duty material really well. That pair of scissors might not be as good at cutting thin, you know, really sheer fabric well, the flip side, you might have a pair of scissors that cuts that sheer fabric really well, but might struggle with some heavier fabrics. So hopefully you don't need to understand all of these features um, because I'm gonna help you understand when you should use certain tools for certain tasks. So hopefully this will allow you to understand the tools and maybe you might notice a scissor in here that you didn't know existed. You can help build your collection of tools 
to tackle those tasks you might not have been able to ta tackle before. So the question that I always ask when people are asking me, what scissors should I use? I always say, what is it that you're trying to cut? And that makes a big difference in all of those parameters for the scissors that we look at because some, there's a wide range of material that people do try to cut with scissors. And if you do it wrong, you could not have a good experience or potentially even damage the scissors that you're using. So we highlight four things that we'll talk about of the materials that we're trying to cut. And we use that to classify different kinds of scissors. Um, we'll look at the, the bread and butter, um, especially of the Michaels crowd of fabric. Cutting fabric is something that Fiskars has done for its mostly its entire existence. Um, and because there's a wide range of fabrics that you cut, you also have a wide range of types of scissors that will cut those fabrics. Now there are a little, a couple other more specific things like thick materials. Sometimes thick materials can be really tough um, and maybe you feel like you're not strong enough to cut those materials. We'll touch on those things as well. There are some scissors that could help you cut those thick materials. Even more specific, you're cutting some sticky stuff, whether it's adhesive backed fabric or you know, maybe a, a glitter sheet of paper or things like that that might tend to stick to the blades. We know this happens. Normal pair of scissors might struggle with that sticky stuff. So we have a few pairs of scissors that is intended specifically for that sticky stuff. And then we all do have the pair of scissors that we've tossed in the junk drawer in our kitchen, in our dining room, and that we use it for about everything. We get to cut open pet food bags, um, to cut straws, to cut I don't, even chicken, you know, cut up some chicken. That happens all the time. And knowing that Fiskars does have some scissors that's great for the junk drawer. It's kind of a universal, it's jack of all trades type of scissors. So we'll talk about those as well. But to dig in, just one further step, fabric. And we, we like I mentioned before, there's tons of different kinds of fabrics. And so accordingly, there's gonna be a tons of different kinds of scissors that do really well with fabric. Now here's a list of them and we'll talk about them a little bit, um, but uh, I do wanna kind of switch to an overhead view to demonstrate some of these things. So make sure that's switched over. I mean, you can see my hands, excellent. Um, so to start, we have what we call the razor edge scissors and razor edge implies an extra sharp pair of scissors. So the aspects that we adjusted on these pairs of scissors are actually the angle that we've ground these scissor blades to. So if you think about a grind angle, um, a square of metal is gonna have a corner and that angle that we put the edge on it will change how well and at what quality the scissors can cut the fabric or cut the material in general. A pair of kids five inch little scissors intended for you know first graders, they're gonna be very close to square edged. They're not all that sharp. What that means is they're a little bit safer. They're not as sharp if you get your finger caught in there. Sometimes they don't even cut hair, which is a good thing for preschoolers. But what razor edge did is it took a normal angle, which most typical pairs of scissors to get technical is about 30 degree angle. And we've sharpened that angle. And by making it a sharper edge, what that does is it allows that scissor to slice through all of the fibers of either fabric or you know, in some cases, if you tried to cut very thin paper, it would work too. Um, and it would slice through those in a much cleaner way. Now, if you imagine, if we were to sharpen this even further and make it really, really thin, it's as, it could become like a knife blade, um, you would probably be able to cut super cleanly. The problem with that then becomes the durability of that sharpened edge goes down. So we've all heard the stories of the, the, the people who have their fabric scissors set over here and no one can touch these fabric scissors. You know, if the, the grandkids grab the fabric scissors and cut paper, they could really hurt it. Well, normally that's because it's got a really sharp, clean edge. So the razor edge scissor is the one that we make the, the good sharp edge, but sharp to a point so that it's durable enough that occasionally if it cuts through something heavier or if someone does grab it and cut a piece of paper, it's not gonna ruin it right away, um, but it's gonna have that sharper edge to properly cut a piece of fabric with the cleanest edge possible. We put razor edge because it's just a grind angle 
on several different products. You know, we put it on the, uh, the, what we would call the line, the razor edge line, which is a pretty typical pair of scissors. It's got nice smooth handles that you can hold very nicely. Um, blades that are rigid. Remember that joint? This has got an extra good joint right on there to hold that blade really well and strong. But we also put it on a couple other pairs of scissors. Like this one is called the Amplify pairs of scissors. Now, let me, um, I will touch on Amplify a little bit more in the next slide. So I'm gonna pass over that, but I'm gonna move kind of to the next thing is we also have a line of scissors, some that use razor edge. This actually, you know, it's, you probably can't see it from the light, but it does say razor edge right under the name. So you know that it's a razor edge. But this pair of scissors looks a little bit different than the rest in that it's missing the normal loops that you would see. Now, the reason for that, we call this the easy action, and there's a whole line of easy action, it's spring-loaded. So something like this, it does two things. One, it lets your hand just have to squeeze. It doesn't have to reopen again. Um, that squeezing action is where your arm is very strong, and the not needing the loops means that you have more clearance around it. So if you have a little less joint mobility, um, that would allow you to grip this a lot easier. Now, it's such a good, it does such a good job at accommodating people with lower joint mobility or people with some weakened muscles in the opening that um, about a decade ago, we took these scissors and others like it to the Arthritis Association and they gave it the commendation. So the Arthritis Association's um, ease of use commendation, which is basically saying that overall, these easy action scissors are great for people with arthritis. They can use it well, they can use it without fatigue. But what that also means is that people even without arthritis are going to be able to use them for longer term, you know, for longer times where you're cutting a large pattern out of fabric, um, use it more frequently and without getting as tired. So a pair of scissors like this is gonna be able to accommodate all of the tasks that you want better than those with the loops that are a little more traditional looking. Now, another feature of this table, or of this easy action shear, is the fact that it's bent funny. You know, it's got a strange angle to this handle. And you might think, well, is that for ergonomic reasons? It might be, it probably is at the same time. But what we have is this easy action, as well as another called tabletop shears. And if you've laid out fabric, and then you've taken your pattern and you placed it on there and you pin it all in place. And then if you don't put in enough pins, sometimes what happens is when you take a traditional pair of scissors and you open it and you go to do, it lifts that fabric up off the table more than you want. And sometimes it can make your pattern shift and you don't really want that. And that's just the nature of handles that when you open them, they just bend up and down the handle and the blade. So by shifting where your handles are, now when I open this pair of scissors, that lower blade never, can, never leaves the tabletop. So by doing that, you can slip the, the blade under the fabric and continue a cut over and over without lifting that fabric as you're moving along. So it's a much easier task of keeping your pattern and your fabric aligned with this tabletop type of scissors. Now we have, Another couple um, scissors, which are a little more detail oriented. They're much smaller blades. They might be doing things like cutting out applique or um, even use, doubling these as thread snips. Um, and these, a lot of times, are easy action like this, where they're the spring-loaded setups, so you don't have large loops. Um, but they also have very fine ground tips for you to make very small cuts in things. Similarly, we all, have thread snips, and thread snips are basically the same as um, a smaller pair of snips, but it's going to be a lot lighter weight, something that sometimes you can put on, on, a, on a necklace for you to just have on your hand at all times. You know, the traditional type of thread snip like this, um, very straightforward, but we also offer a thread snip with a built-in guard that we, you can have that kind of on hand at all times where now this guard is not pointy or dangerous. So you can leave it set where the cat might jump up on the table or things like that and, and feel comfortable leaving that. Moving back to these slides. So we've kind of talked about all of these different things that we can use to cut fabric. 
And I did want to highlight um, a, a something that happens sometimes, and I glossed over it when I talked about Amplify. Um, but if you've ever used a big pair of scissors and stacked up a lot of, say, a lot of layers of sheer fabric or, or layers of, of felt or you know, layers of something that as you're cutting along, it somehow, as you're cutting, the blades tend, they, they open and the, the material folds inside. And, and you don't, you can't complete that cut. And you wonder what, is it, is it my blades are dull or what, what's going on? And most of the time what's happening is the amount that you're trying to cut is pushing the blades apart. So we released a couple of years ago, um, this line called the Amplify pairs of scissors. Um, there's several different sizes of them, um, but what they do is they take the two blades and put in a fancy mechanism that is invisible to you, you never see it working, but as you start cutting something heavy and those blades are trying to push apart, there's the torsion bar and the floating blade tang inside that scissor allows the blades to push against each other. And they can push, push together much harder than it otherwise would. And it allows you to cut through those multiple layers without having the material slip or the blades open up. So something like that is really good when you're cutting lots of layers of things all at once. Um, and it, again, it's invisible to you. This, that feature, that blade tang and the torsion bar, those just happen automatically. It feels extra force and it pushes those blades extra hard together. So it, it's something that has worked really well. And, and we've had about five, maybe six or seven years in the market. Um, and technically I was involved with that development. So I'm really proud to say that that works really well. There's another pair of scissors that I glossed over when I talked about the snips. Um, this looks drastically different than most other snips that you see too. We call this one the total control scissors. Um, this is a pair of scissors that lets you grip the one side of the handle with your entire hand all at once. And you can see in the image on the right, or you can kind of see, if I flip over here, you can see here, you can wrap your entire lower hand around it, giving you a really good control, good grip on this, that you don't have to be holding it with your fingertips. You can kind of use your whole hand and then you use your thumb to push down on the top and it actuates the scissors just in a regular pair a way that you would notice from the front forward. Now, why would we want your thumb to do this action? And it turns out that that thumb muscle is actually stronger than the rest of your fingers on an individual basis. So by using this action instead of this action, you can go for longer periods cutting out intricate details. So we see a lot of people using these for fussy cutting out applique patterns or fussy cutting shapes out of um, fabric to then uh, use um, like a, a paste into wall decorations or things like that that are that are um, you know, a lot of intricate cutting into small little cracks. Um, so because of that we oh wrong button because of that we also include precision ground tips at the front of these snips um, to let you get really close into these um, details and cut them kind of all the way through. So I go back one step and we talked about cutting a lot of fabric, but sometimes you get thick fabric or you know, leather or cork or things that are really more difficult to cut, not from a scissors standpoint, but often from a strength standpoint. It might be too much force to squeeze. And if you've ever experienced this, you can result in you having to like put it on the table and use your body weight. And those are <laughs> a recipe for a bad cut. Um, so we've actually come out with two different designs to technologies, I would say, that will help you cut these thick materials. And the first is Amplify again. Now, in this case, we have Amplify. This is a, a, a different colored handle because this one does not say razor edge on it. We used a traditional angle of the blade in here, still nice and sharp, um, but it uses that mechanism that'll hold the blades together even when you're cutting really heavy duty material. So by doing that, you can tackle things you probably wouldn't want to tackle um, when you're using your traditional pair of scissors if you just need to get it cut. But again, this does not necessarily help 
the strength issue. This is that scissor making sure it can do the cutting. But what about making sure you can do that cut? Well, that comes down to the power cut. So power cut, it's got a funny set of shaped blades on here. You might think, well, those look like bunny ears or something. What, what's up with those? Turns out that by modifying the shape of the blades, what we can do is we can give you almost twice as much power when you're cutting at that tip. And it has to do with the rate that you're cutting that material. You won't even notice it's a traditional pair of scissors other than the funny shape, but it will allow you to cut through much heavier material without having to struggle as much right at the tip, for instance, it'll cut all the way to the tip. So as an example, you know, I've got some cork. Um, it's always tough to compare against Fiskars tools because they already cut really well. But, you know, so if I were to take this pair of scissors and, you know, cut to the tip, virtually it's hard to show you that this is a little bit harder, but when you take a pair of scissors with this power cut technology inside, you can cut all the way to the tip and it just feels butter smooth. It feels like it's the same squeezing from all the way to the beginning to the end. Whereas if you've used a regular pair of scissors, sometimes cutting way at the back, that feels easy, but then you get to that tip and it starts to get harder. So we smooth that whole thing out and you get things that can cut in a much cleaner way all the way to the tip without having to struggle. So that's kind of a cool, there's a couple different versions of the power cut technology in um, both this is kind of the more traditional shape, um, but we also have the shape that is um, the kind of the, the snip. We, it's part of the easy action as well. So those are really handy for when you're cutting heavy duty material. Now, moving on to that sticky stuff. I mentioned cutting through sticky stuff and we do have some products that we have different looking blades at the front. Now, this is actually a coating. Um, this is a, we call it a non-stick or a titanium non-stick coating uh, on those blades. And they act as a barrier for the sticky material to stick to the blades. Um, the secret behind it is this is a non-stick material that is essentially the same as what you get in a non-stick pan, um, like a Teflon it's going to prevent anything from caking onto the edges of the blades or the fronts of the blades, the inside edges. Um, and if something does get stuck it, or something is present there, it doesn't get stuck. You can just kind of wipe it through or even open and close the scissors once or twice and it'll just kind of move all the way through. This is really handy when you're cutting mixed material things. Say your, um, your kid or your grandkid has made a, a, a picture with, with a lot of glued on pieces and you wanna frame it, but it's just a little too big for the frame. So you might wanna cut it out. Well, if you use a traditional pair of scissors, you risk getting some of the glue stuck to those blades. So if you have a pair of scissors like this, where it's um, got this non-stick coating on those blades, you'll be able to get through it and not risk the performance of your scissors later when you're cutting other things. So we coat um, both the Premier line of our scissors um, as well as the Performance line, where the difference there being the Premier is a slightly higher quality, but also a little more costly, um, whereas the Performance might lend itself a little bit better to the junk drawer type of scissors. So to me, those are an excellent choice for when you toss it into your kitchen drawer and have it so you can cut through um, your, like I mentioned, your pet food bag. Um, and normally a good pair of scissors might get some gunk built up, but in this case, um, you've just got this non-stick coating on there for you to just be able to cut through it, not get built up and be performed just as good two years later as it was when you tossed it in. And I mentioned kind of that household items, that everyday junk drawer type of thing. Um, so we do have some performance line of scissors where they are just great and a universal blade grind, not razor edge, but a good universal blade grind. Um, lightweight handles, ergonomically shaped, um, but uh, still pretty comfortable for uh, lefties as well as righties. Um, and, or in some cases, they're symmetric. So they're equally comfortable between lefties and righties. Um, these are not going to be scissors that you try and tackle your, your latest quilting project with, um, but they are going to be great for that everyday use, the household items, just keep them around in a junk drawer. So, we get a lot of questions about sharpening scissors. And sharpening scissors is something that people do. And we recommend that sometimes it is worth it to sharpen your scissors. Um, the, uh, 
you might, now that you're thinking about that razor edge aspect, you might think, well, does every scissor sharpener work with every pair of scissors? Now that we know that there might be some variation in that angle. And it turns out not everyone does work for every pair of scissors, except we do have what's called the universal scissor sharpener. Now this is a specially designed scissor sharpener that has a mechanism inside that um, looks like a traditional sharpener where normally you'd have a ceramic bar that runs at a kind of the, the grind angles. And then the, the idea, what you would do is um, to sharpen it, you would kind of start by feeding the blades in. And then I like to give it a push or you could squeeze, either one works just fine. And, and then this kind of gives a new edge right to the corner inside edges of where you are sharpening. Now, what's unique about the Fiskars Universal Scissor Sharpener is um, it might be tricky to see, but each of these ceramic beams are actually independently controlled and they will automatically adjust to the angle of that blade without you having to do anything. So this was a traditional non razor edge pair of scissors and it went in just fine. Um, then I can take a pair of razor edge scissors and do the same thing. And it's hard to tell, but those, those, uh, those little ceramic pieces inside shifted themselves just in the right way for you to be able to use any size, any angle blade grind and perform just as well. So these blade sharpeners for scissors, they're not gonna work wonders. They're not gonna take a pair of scissors that have dull spots that are completely worn down. It won't resharpen them, but what it will do is keep a scissor performing like new very close to like new. I like to say it'll take a 60% scissor back to 90%. A 20% scissor might not be, you know, it, it's not gonna get you back to brand new, but it'll improve the performance. So we really enjoy the, the idea of this automatically, without you having to do anything, be able to sharpen any pair of scissors that you put into it. So with that, um, I'd actually like to hand it over to Amanda, um, who's going to briefly speak, speak through choosing the right scissor. Now, I've told you a wide range of what we actually offer, but when you go up to that wall at Michael's, what, what is, what, how do we tell which one is which? So Amanda, if you oh, I'll flip it back over, um, you can take over. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Before I kind of get into that, are there any questions, Holly, that we want to answer prior to getting into selecting at Shelf? a good opportunity. Yes, there was one question that came through and they were just asking, I guess, the frequency and how often you should be sharpening. Ah, well, with a, a scissor sharpener like this, you actually can't over sharpen. Something like this is great for just kind of fine tuning the edge of that pair of scissors. So you shouldn't be concerned ever about doing it too much. Using it enough, it's really kind of that preference or a performance thing. If it feels like it wasn't good enough, do it a couple more times. And when you do it, you probably only need to do it just you know two or three times at most. And what I like to have it is have it when you're done with a task and you're about to put it away, you're running through a couple times. You don't have to do it every 10 cuts or anything like that. You know, just when you have it and you're about to put this back in the drawer, you're running through three or four times and then you're done. And that'll keep it at tip top shape. Great. Otherwise, that was all we had so far. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you. Um, we'll have time for questions at the end too, yes. the additional that come up. Uh, however, I did want to spend a little bit of time now that you know that there's such a vast majority of scissors out there, you might not know which one is needed for my project when you're standing at shelf looking at a wall of scissors at Michael's. So in order to help guide you, we have done a lot of research in trying to understand what are the key things that will help guide you in deciding what are the right scissors for me. So we have gone about this in a few ways. Um, and one of the first ways that we've done it is purely by the color of packaging. A few years ago, you, you might have walked up to the planogram and seen just a wall of orange scissors. And from that point of view, it might have been very difficult to understand, is this scissors for me? Um, how do I compare it to the scissors right next to it? Um, and so we've gone ahead and provided a tiered logic as it relates to color in relation to kind of 
providing a premium step-up story. So all of our razor edge blade scissors that have the most premium blades for fabric only will have black packaging. Our standard tried and true Fiskar scissors will be on orange and then kind of our junk drawer type of scissors will be on white. However, we do know that one of the first things that you might be considering is what am I cutting um, to Dan's point earlier. And so we've gone ahead and added a little boxed tier call out on the packaging as well. So you will see that on our black packaging, we make the call out that it has the sharpest blades only for fabric. On the orange packaging, it says sharper blades ideal for fabric. Uh, and then on the white packaging, you'll see that it says household materials because that will kind of guide you in the right direction as to which scissors is perfect for the job. However, to all of the things that Dan has been speaking to, there's a lot of technology that helps you kind of determine what best suits your needs. So on the left-hand side of packaging, we always like to make the callouts that kind of help differentiate the scissors from a technical standpoint in a way that is very approachable. So you might see a one main thing on that black packaging that says clean cuts through more layers. So you would understand that, you know, amplify might not really resonate with you. However, the term that you're gonna be cutting through either thicker materials or through multiple layers would resonate with you for your project. And then beyond that, we like to call out additional call outs, whether it's the size of the scissors, um, because we know that that kind of helps drive eight inches a very universal size. However, we know that five inches very common as well as four and nine inch dependent on your project needs, as well as additional technology calls like easy action, where we know that that is really intended to help reduce the fatigue while you're cutting. Um, we like to call out as well features on kind of the nonstick blades uh, as well. That kind of helps you understand that that is truly for those sticky materials, um, adhesive. So when you do walk up to kind of your scissors, um, wall at Michael's, you'll see that it's really easy to kind of pick out the black packaging versus the orange and the white. It, it really helps you step up because we do know that uh, for most of your projects, if you're in this area of the store, you're probably gonna be cutting fabric. And if you are looking to cut those um, really fine materials, whether it be silk or if you're cutting thick materials, you might be looking to go more of the razor edge blades with the black packaging. As you know, that that is strictly for fabric um, and you would only want somebody using uh, those scissors on that type of material. However, if you're looking to do more projects that might need more universal cutting, you might look to the orange scissors as we know that they're ideal for fabric um, and the types of projects that you might be completing. However, they do um, have the capabilities of cutting through additional materials, whether that be things like paper. And then if we think about nonstick as well, you might be thinking, oh, I might need to be cutting through um, adhesive tape, um, fabric tape, things of that nature for your projects. And while you're there, you might think, well, I just need a junk drawer pair of scissors. And that's where the household materials come in and kind of help round out your assortment uh, from a collective perspective. To Dan's point, we do kind of have scissors in other areas of the store. While you might be in this area um, cutting or looking for scissors for your sewing and quilting projects, we do make additional call outs. So when Dan talked about Amplify, um, we do have the version without the razor edge blades. And on that packaging, we would call out that it's perfect for mixed media. We know that for those, it, it's good for those thick materials. So you would want those. You might just want your standard um, orange handled scissors as you see in the middle here for those types of projects as well, since they are great for a variety of materials. Um, you will only find these types of black packaging scissors um, primarily within the uh, sewing and quilting area of your store. However, we do offer additional scissors um, for kind of the paper crafting area that still has the uh, easy action technology. Uh, we offer nonstick versions as well, and it makes it great for you to have kind of a set for your fabric needs as well as maybe any other projects as we know that there's lots of people out there that don't just do one type of project. They kind of like to bop around, try new things, um, and dabble in 
and maybe they see a project on Pinterest that gets them inspired. And so we wanna make sure that we're kind of providing those types of opportunities for individuals to have scissors for any type of project need that they might have. Any questions as it relates to any of the packaging that you've seen, Holly, before we kind of wrap up with a nice visual that shows a little bit more in depth how you might choose the appropriate scissors on the next page? We do have some questions, but nothing that's specific to packaging right now. Okay, great. I will just wrap up before we kind of head over to the questions. Um, oh, lights turned off on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, in order for you to, again, kind of reiterating the idea that we offer scissors that are really only intended to be cutting fabric. Um, you can see that anything with a razor edge blade, um, as well as kind of our Amplify with razor edge, our Easy Action technology uh, with razor edge, as well as our tabletop um, options that also includes razor edge are ideal for any type of sewing and quilting project. Um, and then kind of the mixed media route, you will have our standard blades um, that are still sharper than kind of what you would see on the household materials. However, they are also great in the sense that you can use them for mixed media projects. Um, they're still great for fabric, um, but again, allow you to have more variability um, in what you are cutting with them and providing you the options for nonstick for anybody that might be doing um, projects with tapes and adhesives. And then again, kind of that white household material that shows you that you can have the household junk drawer option for you. So I will open the floor for questions um, that I'm sure either Dan or I can help answer. Yeah, so the first one we had was, can I sharpen my nine inch razor edge scissors with the sharpener? Absolutely, yes. So the way that this sharpener works, let me flip over to here, is you're just going to insert at the tip and then push forward. There's no limit to the length of the blades that you can put into this scissor sharpener. Um, the, because it's the universal sharpener, it can adjust to be this razor edge. Um, but again, whether you're using eight inch, nine inch, or even some other length, uh, there's no limit to that. Great. Um, next one we had was kind of more of a general question about serrated blades. So when to use those, um, kind of do you need to use them differently? Um, and what is what are those considered? So out here at the table, I actually have a pair of scissors with the serrations and that happened to be um, this, uh, the, the, the power cut pair of scissors. Now this one is positioned as more of a mixed media type of scissor because it's cutting those heavy materials and normally fabrics don't really, they're not that heavy. So it's hard to see on here, but there are some very fine micro serrations on this blade edge. And what a serration typically does is it prevents materials from squirting out, especially when you're cutting way out at this edge here. Um, you know, even a traditional pair of scissors like this, if you open your scissors wide and put something really far in, if you try and squeeze, sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll scooch down the blade before it actually cuts. Serrations are going to grip it a little bit better and be able to hold on to that material closer to the pivot, which is gonna be a little easier to cut there typically, um, but it prevents it from squirting out. Um, and that is gonna work for materials that are gonna be tough to cut. Um, but it's also not gonna make much of a difference when you have a material that is just like a regular fabric. Um, so a serration like this, um, when cutting regular fabric, because it's a small enough edge, you'll probably not notice it at all. Um, there's a chance that you might notice uh, a little bit of, um, I wouldn't say it's a zigzag, but it's more like there's a tiniest little bit of a wave, but normally that only happens if you're actually holding your scissors at an angle when you cut. Normally, if you're cutting straight up and down, you won't even notice. So a pair of scissors with serrations is gonna be great for when you're cutting things that would tend to push out. Um, and in generally, they're gonna function pretty much the same as the rest. Amanda, do you, does that sound right to you? Okay. Yes, that sounds great. All right, thank you. 
The next one, is there a scissors for crafting and cardstock? We talked a lot about so in quilting today. I know we touched on it a little bit, but if we could revisit some that you would suggest for that. Amanda, you want to cover that? I feel sure, like I can cover that. So um, one of the biggest recommendations I would say are at the bottom of that orange section would be your nonstick cutting. Um, on the packaging itself, it will say ideal for mixed media. Um, what's great about them is that they do have those sharper blades, but then they have that nonstick coating as well. So it's easy to kind of bop from material to material. Um, and amplify as well as those would allow you to kind of cut those thicker materials that you might have in your projects. And we also offer five inch options within those as well. So may maybe you're doing a little bit more intricate cutting with micro tip blades that would help you kind of get those really precise cuts that you might have within your mixed media projects. Cardstock, especially, if, especially if you get heavier and heavier, I mean, illustration boards, sometimes those get really hard to cut. But I would also point out that um, the power cut would let you cut through those materials a little bit easier too. So that's an option as well. Absolutely. Yeah, the power cut, I would say, is kind of our biggest go-to, my biggest go-to as well, since it does have the ability to go through things such as cork and really heavy card stock. It's just kind of, it runs the gamut of kind of those thicker materials that you might run across, but also is capable of cutting more of your standard materials that you would come across. Great. Um, one other question we did have was, do you carry all these items in the store at this time? I answered that in the chat box, but everything you are seeing today is available at Michael's. Um, then the next one, can the sharpener be used for other brand scissors? Yes, so there's not much difference in grind angles, um, when you look at other competitors, there are maybe a more limited range. Um, our razor edge is typically a little bit sharper than the competitors as well. But because this universal scissor sharpener can adjust, it can accommodate those competitive brands as well. The only exception I would say to that is um, there are a limited, oh, let me flip to this one. There's a limited width with, that can be put into here. So if you have um, a pair of really thick bladed forged scissors, for instance. Some of those might not fit in this universal sharpener, but we did make them big enough that sometimes those will fit too. So most of the, I would say 98% of the scissors that you can find either on shelf or that you have in a drawer should be able to fit in this universal scissor sharpener and function just as well. Great. Then the next one, which scissors do I use for sticky paper? So I think let's talk a little bit more about those black nonstick blades. Sure. Oh, let me, let me find, hold on. Looking <laughs> for a pair in my, in the office here. I, that's the one I don't think I grabbed. But I think we could speak to it. Yeah. I think any scissors that you see with those black blades of ours, um, we'll identify it as having the nonstick coating that makes it really easy to work with adhesive materials. That's kind of our biggest call out to kind of let you know that it's not just a standard blade, there is a coating on it um, and that it's really designed for those types of materials. Anything yep. to add? No, that, that's right. I mean, we, we, we apply that coating when we need it and, and make it work very well. Yep, and the blades will be labeled, they say nonstick as well, um, making it also clear um, kind of what makes the blade a little bit more special. Similarly to how Dan highlighted that anything with a razor edge blade grind on it um, calls out razor edge, we do call out nonstick as well, just in case you kind of see a pair next to it, maybe you don't remember that a black versus kind of a standard stainless steel silver blade um, is different. I, I, think this, go ahead. I was just the only going to add that I do think that we put our nonstick bo on both the household material type scissors as well as the orange packaging ones. So both of those things could have that nonstick on them. Yep. While on this topic, someone asked, does the coating wear off? Great question. And some people are also a little concerned about using a scissor sharpener when they have a coated blade. But I'm here to say that um, the coating 
that is covering the entire edge, both the sharp part and the ground edge, as well as all the faces, when you sharpen them or when you're using them, you're using very little of that sharp edge right at the corner, but the nonstick properties work for the entire amount of the blade. So in reality, when you are cutting through sticky materials, um, the stickiness starts causing problems when it starts getting on the inside edges of the blades. But any sort of wear that you're going to see is normally gonna be right at that edge, the cutting edge. So really sharpening or as the, uh, you know, as the life, as, as you're using it over the, the lifetime of the scissors, um, that coating won't really wear off on the points where it matters. It might, you know, if you sharpen it, you might lose a little bit of that coating right at the edge. So, but that doesn't matter for the overall use of the, the non-stick properties of the tool. Great. Another good question. So do all these scissors come left-handed? Amanda, that's you. <laughs> so we do offer limited um, options because the handles are contoured. Most of them are for right-handed users. However, um, the easy action scissors are ambidextrous. Um, as well as we do offer kind of the standard orange handled scissors that you're seeing in the middle there in a left-handed version. And the difference is that it'll have a red handle, um, making it easily identifiable. Um, the biggest difference is that, you know, on some of our ambidextrous uh, scissors, the blades are actually reversed, correct, Dan? Uh, yes, so- Really yep. left-handed. Mm -hmm. So these are true left-handed scissors. Um, they're even labeled as such left-handed right on the blade badge. Yes, and a lot of our smaller scissors um, do not have contoured handles, um, which makes them ambidextrous in themselves as well, um, at least as far as kind of those scissors that you would see that fall within kind of that orange and black packaging. Um, our kind of general purpose, everyday household scissors um, are a little less contoured, um, making them easier to be ambidextrous and viable for left-handed users to use as well. Great question. All right, next, what about metal? What can you use to cut metal or what do you suggest? Oh, cutting um, metal. Well, so if it's a traditional foil, like a thin foil that you're going to use often in the DIY categories, um, I, I had to think for a second, do they mean like industrial sheet metal, which is a different answer. But if you're thinking more the foil and, and the kind of the decorative material, um, typically our mixed media shears should do that just fine. Um, you know, the, the razor edge, again, that would struggle and have some problems if you did that, because again, we call that fabric only. But really the, the mixed media or the, the fabrics, paper and more, kind of the orange packaging ones, those should cut thin metal with, with really out any trouble. And power cut also has been tested and yes. um, was designed with the idea of there are these mixed media consumers doing the DIY home decor projects um, that might be using kind of that decorative sheet metal um, and they cut through it like no problem. I mm -hmm. use them all the time for kind of that thin sheet metal. Yeah. So when I'm doing that, this, this one, the, the easy action version of the power cut, um, this is a really heavy duty thing that can really cut through metal without any trouble, but it's also still got a really nice sharp tip so that you can do intricate cuts as well. And I believe that one also has the wire cutter built in, right? Oh, it does. I yes, it totally does. forgot about that. Yeah. So right. <laughs> Right here and here. So if you're doing floral arranging with, with wire stemmed um, things, you can just kind of slide it in there. And that gives you a lot of leverage to be able to cut through a wire with no struggles. And you don't risk trying to cut it on the sharp edges of the blade. Yes. All right, let's see. How would you sharpen the nine inch easy action razor edge offset shears? Can you that sharpen would that? would be I guess? this one, I believe. I'm pretty yes. sure this is the, uh, this might be the okay. eight. I think this is the eight, but the only difference with that one, the nine is, is an inch longer. And it <laughs> turns out this one, you should be able to do it. 
in exactly the same way as you do the others, where you just kind of positioning it in the right place and running it up. And you can see it does not really affect the function of that, uh, of the universal scissor sharpener really at all. Great. My blades are so sharp, actually. Got a little bit of plastic shaving came off it when I sharpened. <laughs> Um, I'm just looking. I think that's most of the questions we've got to so far. Oh, can you sharpen pinking shears? Pinking shears are a different, a different beast, a different animal. Um, they are very difficult to sharpen, um, and normally uh, those are not something that you can do at home. Um, I do believe there are some services out there that offer sharpening for pinking shears. Um, I don't have any that I've used in the past. Um, so uh, I can't really recommend any, but pinking shears are a specialty thing that they, they're usually often a little bit harder. So they don't require as much sharpening, but especially if you have a very old pair of scissors, if you Googled um, you know, pinking shears sharpening services, I think they exist, but there is not a consumer at home method to do so. Got it. Let's see, I think we're getting most of them. We got a couple of thank yous. People have learned a lot today. Awesome, right. love to hear that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's about it. Any last comments that wanna come through? Otherwise, I think we're good to wrap up. It's always my pleasure to help educate people about what goes inside these seemingly simple tools um, but as a nerd, a self-proclaimed nerd, I love learning about the different things inside seemingly simple things. Um, so scissors are a great example. Like I said, they're thousands of years old. And if you take a look at recovered scissors from ancient sites, they look pretty much the same. They've got blades and it's got a joint and they've got handles that you hold. But at the same time, there's so much that's going on with them and so many embedded I, I, technologies but not really like technology, but embedded things within them that make them really good and important and do their job so well. It's just, it's exciting to me. Great, yes. I think that's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys, everyone for your time. It was nice seeing your faces um, for those with the videos. Um, kind of speaking to, uh, to everyone in person, it's, it's almost like that. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you all were able to take the time today and learn a little bit more about Fiskar's tools and, and why we love making scissors. Yes, thank you, everybody. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day.